Now, an, interest, an interesting exercise, so in that model, you always have part of unemployment that's due to a lack of job, part that's due to matching friction. But now we can ask, like, how do these two components vary over the business cycle? And a presumption when you think about that is that all the tide rises all boats, right? That when unemployment is high, all types of unemployment are high. So rationing unemployment is high, frictional unemployment is high. Where unemployment is low, all types of unemployment are low. Rationing unemployment is low, frictional unemployment is low. But it turns out that that's not actually how things work, which is a little bit surprising. Actually, what will happen is that in, in good times, it's true that rationing unemployment would be low, but frictional unemployment will be large. In bad times, rationing unemployment will be large, but frictional unemployment will be low. So frictional unemployment moves in opposite, in opposite direction from total unemployment, which is a little bit surprising. And, um, but it's easy, to see, uh, it's easy to see why. So let's use a diagram to, to, to look at um, frictional and rationing unemployment over the business cycle. So we're going to look at uh, what happens when the labor demand moves around. You remember like business cycle, we want to be able to generate realistic fluctuations in unemployment and vacancies. We need to look at what happens when productivity moves around. Uh, we need to look at what happens when labor demand moves around. You know, business cycle don't seem to be generated by shift in labor supply. Uh, and so let's see what, uh, what happens when labor demand uh, moves around. So we'll have, let's start with good times. Oops, sorry. And this will be a high labor demand. Then we're going to contrast that we're going to contrast that with um, bad times. And that's going to be a low labor demand. And let's see how the decomposition changes. Okay, so um, let's plot two diagrams. So we'll start with the labor, di labor market diagram in good times. So let's have our labor supply, which will be the same in both cases anyway. Sorry. Okay, so that's the labor supply. So here we're in good time. So let's put now let's have a strong labor demand. Something like this. So how much of unemployment is rationing unemployment? How much is frictional unemployment? So we follow our usual technique. So we look at the intercept here. We split unemployment in two like this okay so this is our equilibrium so uh, so here we can see frictional unemployment is actually quite big it's all of this Rational unemployment is this tiny thing here. 
Okay, and total unemployment, of course. Uh, total unemployment, of course, is the sum of these two things, so it's going to be all of this. So total unemployment is here, uh, and you can see rationing is kind of small, Frictional unemployment is, is quite big here. Okay. So we have high UF, low UR. And overall unemployment is fairly low because here we have a good time. So in good times, it, obviously, you know, the labor demand is shifted uh, far out. So that the lack of job is small, so rationing unemployment is, is small. That's why we have a low rationing unemployment. Labor demand is far out, so total unemployment will be low. But nevertheless, you can see that because the tightness is quite high, uh, the reduction in, in employment due to the matching friction is quite big. That's because of tightness that we have here. is actually quite elevated. So that's why frictional unemployment is actually high here. Okay, so now how are things going to be different in bad times? Well, you'll see in fact they'll be quite different. So let's plot another diagram. Let's put the same labor supply. But now let's put a new labor demand, which is much further in, right? Because now we are looking at bad times, so maybe something like this. Okay, so what do we have? So here we have the intercept. Okay, so first thing we can see is that obviously uh, rationing unemployment is much, much bigger than before. Okay, so we have high rationing unemployment and that's just because the labor demand uh, has shifted inside compared to before, and, and therefore the lack of job has really opened up compared to before. Okay. And the kind of economic mechanism being is that productivity uh, has fallen, so workers are less productive. Because wages are rigid, the wage they haven't fallen as much as productivity. Hence, the profitability of workers are fallen. So firms realizing that workers are less productive, they don't want to hire as many workers. And so that explains why the labor demand has shifted inside. Now in equilibrium, demand has to still be equal to supply, but because the demand is much further inside, tightness that we have here is much lower. So that's our new equilibrium. You can see that the tightness has fallen drastically and unemployment is much, uh, of course, much higher. So, the total unemployment is much higher than before. You can see it here. Okay. So total unemployment has really increased because we've, um, the economy has fallen down the, labor, uh, down the labor supply. The labor supply is the same, tightness is much lower, so unemployment is much higher. Rationing unemployment is also much higher. Now what happened to frictional unemployment? Well, you can see because um, tightness is much lower, the amount of unemployment that has been reduced due to the matching friction is very small. You know, it's a tiny amount that we have here. Okay. 
the idea is that uh, you know there's a big lack of jobs. There are a lot of unemployed workers. You know the tightness is very low. For firm, it's very very easy to recruit in that time. It's not exactly free, but it's very cheap just because vacancies are filled so easily. And as a result, if you know if we compare a world without recruiting costs and a world with actual recruiting costs, because these recruiting costs, you know, the number of recruiters that the firm need to uh, have is quite low. For firms, it's not really a big deal that they have to recruit workers because recruiting is so easy. So the additional amount of unemployment due to recruiting is quite low. So we have low frictional unemployment actually. So um, in good times, you have low unemployment and low rationing unemployment. In bad times, you have high unemployment, high rationing unemployment, but low frictional unemployment. That's just an intuition that it's easy for firms to recruit. In bad times of recruiting, matching frictions don't add very much unemployment. Okay? So here you can see it on the diagram. There is a way to establish that mathematically. A little bit involved, if you want to look at uh, in the readings, uh, in the paper um, that I wrote, do matching frictions explain unemployment? If you go to the appendix, uh, you will see the mathematical derivation for that. It's not very complicated, but you know, it's a little bit more involved than what we've seen so far, so I'm not going to talk about it, but you can look at the paper. Uh, 